Hi, Lexi Daly here again for Paper Train Stamp Affair. Welcome back to the 80s and my second challenge, passing notes. So for all of time, kids will write notes to each other and pass them in class and in the hallways at school. Um, but they've definitely taken a back seat to cell phones and texting and they were truly in their heyday in the 80s. Um, when I was in school, we would fold them in special ways similar to origami um, and pass them on. And you'd send them home with people. You might pass them in the hallways or pass them in the middle, in the middle of class or stick them in lockers. So first, I'd like to show you um, a, these three simple folds. So let's get out some regular. I'm going to use some regular notebook paper to be authentic. And I'll show you how to do that. So using either text weight, text weight or notebook paper um, is a good way to practice and get started and then you can change your applications some of your applications to cardstock so for this first basic one we're gonna fold corner in all the way to the straight edge of the paper and then we fold the right side into the left all the way again straight edge to the paper similar to folding airplanes. Let me turn it over. And we're going to go right up to where the paper met before and fold up. Up again. Then we can bring the flap down, turn it over, and you tuck it right in, leaving a little bit hang hanging out to pull. Your message is neatly tucked inside. You can put two from on the outside or decorate it as you wish. A second fold that I remember is a little more detailed. Um, I found it a little harder to apply it as a with cardstock too because of the way it folds, but it's still very cute. So first of all, you take your paper and just lightly fold it in the middle so that you know where the middle of your pages are. And then you're going to fold like an airplane all four corners into the center. One. Two, make sure that's even as much as possible. Three. And four. Then you take the two straight edges of your paper and fold them into that center line as well. One. Two. Okay. Next, you might have to flatten these out a little bit. Next, you fold your points in to the little space that is left for them on each side. One and two. Again, you might have to press your creases. They kind of change a little bit as you add more folds in. Okay, next, you take it, turn it over, and fold this one up. Fold this one down and then tuck one into the other. And I like to see which one's more perfect personally, and I guess it's this one. And you tuck in the corner here. This is where it takes a little maneuvering for this one. And you tuck in the other side, and there you have it. You can write pull here, but in order to open it, you just pull right there, and everything comes apart. And then finally, one that's still around definitely for playing football is the little paper football method. It makes it a nice small triangle that's very easy for passing. So you need to make your paper, fold it in half, and then half again. And then you just start making triangles. I like to leave myself a little bit of room to cover the edges. And it's very much like folding a flag. You do have to keep, you know, manipula manipulating your paper a little bit. It's going to want to come unfolded. And so every now and then there's going to be a little bit more to tuck in. So on. And 
so forth. All the way until you get to the end. And you fold that in. And tuck. And there's your little paper football. And a very small letter to pass. Alright, so those are the three basic folds that I'm going to be using today. Let me change out supplies and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that you know the basics of note folding, um, we are going to take it to the card making level and create another gift card holder. My kids give a lot of those, so we are always in need. Um, you're going to need one sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. I've chosen pink. I'm going to set that aside for just a minute. Um, and I want a rainbow with the two with two clouds and the unicorn from the pattern paper. I'm also going to set those aside and I want to prepare the rainbow before we start folding. The rainbow is um, is not is attached to the paper. It is, does not cut into all the tiny pieces. This is very helpful for the pieces not getting stuck into the die and um, for putting them all back together again uh, with the cloud. If you do want them all separate colors, all you need to do is die cut them in separate colors and then snip them or cut them with a paper cutter along the edge right here and then reassemble them. I've chosen to color mine. I think it's you know very easy to do and then I just attach the little ends to the cloud or have a little extra space for my adhesive. So first of all, what I do is I isolate the colors that I need. Actually, let me snip out the center. Um, I isolate the colors and color them one at a time with scrap piece of cardstock. And then I can use the fat side of my Copic and just get a nice layer of color on there. And then I continue. I'll move the red one to the back. Another piece of cardstock to, alt, to um, isolate the next one. and so on until they are all complete. I'll set that aside as well. Now, we have all that ready. We'll get to the folding of this to turn it into a gift card holder that looks like the, and works like the folded notes. So first of all, instead of all folding, like with the text weight paper, we're going to need to cut um, some of the folds in order to make it work and fold and not be bulky and not have all the extra paper. So first of all, I'm going to score my paper at eight and a half inches across because when you fold the triangle at the top, it makes a square. So I can recreate that square by scoring it because we're going to need this last part. And then, where I would have folded it over, I'm going to cut from corner to corner. And in order to do some of the measuring, I have to switch my blades around instead of leaving them in place like I normally do. So I'm going to line that up, make sure that my guide goes from corner to corner, and slice. That we don't need. All right, and then next I'm going to make another score 
at four and a quarter because remember we folded we folded it over from this side to here. So again, that's half of the paper, four and a quarter. I'm going to make a score. Now, if we folded it from here and folded it up, it would again be very bulky. So what I'm going to do, and I want to create a pocket for um, a gift card. So what I'm going to do is cut out this square so that when we fold it, there's just the one, and this is going to become the front of our pocket. So just trust me on this. I'll go ahead and cut it and show you what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to cut along that score line up to the next score line, and then the same for this line. So right along the score line, just up to the next, and stop and a little layer that you can use on another project. All right, now we're almost there. What we need to do now, I want my pocket to have an opening so that the gift card peeks through. So we're just going to create a cut right here, and I'm gonna use this line as a guide, and make it straight, and then just cut off the corner there, and it gives it a nice little triangle. Nice little angle. Okay, now that's all I'm going to use my scoring tool for. I'm going to hand score the score marks after this, and I'll explain why as I go. So now you have this weird shaped card, and you might be wondering how it's going to turn into the note card. Well, let's start folding and we'll see. So we're going to fold it here. Press down our crease, okay, and then um, this gets folded up. Now, again, it feels kind of bulky, and let me see if there's anything I can do about that. Might have to. I think I'm going to go back in and take off just a little bit more of this so that it folds a little bit better. Or no, actually, if I line it up, I can re press it down it works okay so we have that fold right there now we need it to fold again right here but it's kind of bulky to do that and so I'm going to use a ruler and another scoring tool that I have and I'm gonna go just above this line to give a little bit of room for everything to fold over nicely without buckling too much. And then I'm also using a scoring tool with a big ball on it. It gives me a little bit of clearance room too. It helps. My hands are, make sure I hold that steady. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna fold it back in half, and then we're going to fold it down this way. It's going to mess with some of our other creases a little bit, but just gently press them down whenever you can. I think that the overall look is worth a little bit of, of that extra creasing. Um, so here, you don't even need the ruler to score again. The width of this ball will help it score in the right place. And you score there, and it fits around. And then you have the basics of your letter that look just like the letter before, but without the weight of it. And that one little place is on the back, so that's okay. All right, so now we need to score here, and we need to get this in there. And paper tray and cardstock is very heavy, which makes it feel really nice in your hand, but for all these folds, it's a little difficult um, to maneuver just without the score lines. So I want to show you that how I've been scoring it. I'm going to put a little extra cardstock behind here and then I'm going to score it just above that line. And my reason for putting the extra cardstock is so that I don't get an additional line behind it. So let me line that up properly and then have a score line just slightly above it here. And then I need another score line slightly off parallel, wider on the left. 
So it's almost parallel, but a little bit wider for my little tab to work. And you can do it parallel too, but then your tab's going to be facing another direction. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So then we can fold them down easier and fold it. And now our tab is sticking out the right way and it will tuck right in. Okay. Now this is the basic outside of the card, but we do need to unfold it and fix our pocket. So this is where the pocket is going to be right here. This is where we left it open um, so that when you open the card, when you open the card, your gift card can go right in here. Room for a message here. And um, it'll be an all-in-one gift that your child can bring to a party. So here's where I use a little bit of washi tape and adhesive to stick it together. So first, I'm going to measure out my washi tape where I want it to go, just stick it on the top piece, fold this piece in, add my adhesive here, press it all down, press my washi tape down really good right here, and then snip off the edge so that we can't see it. All right. Now I also thought it would be nice to bring some of um, some of the handwritten words from the set to this card to make it look like a note. So we're going to put the too good to be forgotten sentiment up here. And the stay sweet down here. And a few little hearts. That's really all you need on this side. And then we'll flip it over. And I have Just For You from my Rattled set. It's got a nice retro kind of font. And that is going to go right here. That's how it's facing up. And so we'll just take that in black and put it right there. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Oh no, we can't do that yet. I'll be back to that in a second. All right, so here's your basics of the card. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it together to show you where I want to, how I wanna do the embellishments. I have my rainbow here that's all nice and together and I want to tuck it in. You'll see it all the way when you open it, but it kind of gives it a neat little, shows off the three-dimensional aspect of this project. I put a little more adhesive on it, tuck it in there and press it down. And we'll take our um, unicorn and stick him in there too. And then since we used Stay Sweet inside, we can use Love Ya on the outside with a couple more of those doodle hearts. And if you have a light hand, you can stamp that while it's folded, but it might be better to, oh, if I lost some of my adhesive there. I can't really take it off, so I'm just going to get a little bit on the back of here with my pen, just to stick that down. There we go. And then as a finishing touch, I'm going to add just a little loop to show that you pull. And you could even write the word here too. Since these are based on my handwriting, it works to do a little extra handwriting there. And that's your finished card. But before you send it, don't forget to add your gift card. And a little personal note. As a finishing touch, I think that I will add a few little heart stickers here. 
Let's start with um, a yellow and then put a red and a blue on either side. And there you have it. As I did earlier, I created a second version for a boy in different colors and using the cassette stamp in place of the rainbow and a couple of other um, of the circles. Now one more note before I send you off to create. Um, if you would like to create an embellishment for your card, these make cute little embellishments too. Um, I recommend using a text weight paper. I've cut a little piece of my stamping paper and I've gone with dimensions of four by five and a quarter. It makes a good little card, the little extra um, quarter helps with some folding space and this enables me to be able to fold to perfectly to the center, the center line, because I did four inches. So I'm just going to quickly fold that up based on the directions from earlier. You can always go back in the video and rewatch and pause. And um, this one makes a really cute embellishment, I think. The way that you pull it open and you can tuck in one small little extra sentiment. So I'm going a little fast here for the sake of time. And there we have just like before. And we fold and tuck. And because it's text weight, you can bend it a little bit more and it's more forgiving once you get it in place. But I'm having trouble here with this one. There we go. There we go. See? Nice and flattened out. You can press it and manipulate it. And here are a couple of ideas with it. See, like I said, you might pull to match. And if you pull it open, there's another little sentiment. And here's a second one with the same card, same design, same um, fold. And I've kind of repeated the school note paper idea with the um, pattern paper. We'll torn at the edge for a little extra piece in the layout. And um, the, mat the writing here matches the stamp writing. And then here's one with the football fold. fold. I mimicked the triangle of the football, football by cutting the paper to match. This one doesn't open, it's really just for an embellishment. And I cut the paper a little shorter so that it wasn't quite as thick because that football, football fold um, can get thick. Um, so I just made the paper a little bit shorter. You can play with your size of your paper and you don't need it to be four inches wide either because you really just need an inch wide um, column of paper. Um, so there you go three ideas for using the cards as embellishments. Thank you. I hope you had fun um, today with Stampin' Fair, and I can't wait to see what you've created. Bye.